What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're fighting with state of the market and stock picks for April 13th, 2023. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as we do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So what is going on currently in the market? Well, today was quite interesting, actually, what happened um, if you want to look, we had the core CPI today. We also had the FOMC meeting notes today as well. Uh, but the first thing about core, uh, we were expecting uh, roughly around a 5.2 uh, coming off of a 6 for uh, headline inflation. Uh, and we came in at 5. So there was a big drop in the headline inflation. The problem is, is uh, there's still a lot of, things that are extremely high. A lot of food is extremely high. Shelter is extremely high. A lot of things we talk about are still very, very high. But what really dropped uh, or had the biggest significant drop was oil. Uh, but that being said, there was uh, they were starting to see oil creep back up. So electricity was still high. Um, gas was still high. So again, a lot of misleading information when it comes to core could be why to the reason why we started selling off and not only that but there was more recession talks uh coming from the banks coming from fed members say we might have a quote-unquote mild recession now this is something you know all we've heard is soft landings and uh, or no landing and now we're starting to hear mild uh landing we got a lot of downgrades on the banks uh things are just selling and this is and just by looking at this, this is something I watched all day. And it was what the price action I watched all day. When this thing tried to push up to 4135, there was there was these candles that shot up. They were strong. There was strong momentum going into it. But as soon as it hit essentially around roughly around this area, it wicked right down. It didn't hold for very long. And again, attempted to do it multiple times a day and just absolutely got crushed by the end of the day. Uh, the market is not pushing up. We are something i keep reiterating we are in a bad state um and this whole uh utopic uh perspective and stuff that we talk about on here that uh you know there's the realistic aspect of what's actually going on in the world and then there's this, this utopic picture and these are the things that you need to understand when dealing with uh, the stock market and understand that if by any chance uh the realism or the the realistic uh, reality of the situation hits this utopic uh, perspective that's that's plastered across headline news. If it hits that, that's when you get crashes. That's when you get problems. And so you have there's a difference because of the fact that they try to uh, navigate essentially, uh, you know, this 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 whole theme until hopefully that if something does come up they can try to fix it or patch it before it gets to be too big and so that's how they essentially have been doing it for years and it's just the way it is uh, right to try to help with um with realizing that things are okay because again you can't control the masses without with people panicking Right. And that's why they stopped the bank run as soon as they could. It led into another week and we lost Credit Suisse. And there's still you have to understand Credit Suisse is still not done. There's still a lot of problems with Credit Suisse in, um, uh, you know, the U.S. USB didn't even want to take them in. Right. And understand that they, they really didn't have nothing but a choice but to. And again, why they're still having a lot of issues with Credit Suisse. Uh, and then not only that, one of the biggest banks in SVB, right? And understand that there was a lot of people don't want to absorb that. And so right now, again, there's you're starting to see this thing unfold and it's starting to get nastier and nastier and nastier. And I, something I've talked about is this thing is going to go on for years, right? Like this environment that we're in is going to be affected for years. Uh, we need a crash or we need demand to slow way way down uh, for that to happen and the only way to do that is to keep pressing rates uh, have high interest rates in uh, along with high inflation which are still is very high inflation on basic necessities right the, the, just like I said the other day people are skipping meals uh, because they can't even uh, feed themselves and so these high interest rates and everything that's currently going on and people getting laid off because uh, 
companies have to lay off because they can't even stay in the green. Um, so you're pressing for this demand to go away. Uh, and the way to do that is to try to kill the consumer, right? And try to uh, make sure you extract all of, uh, essentially all of their money, right? Whether that's all their savings, all their assets uh, to kill demand, but demand is, is still there. So again, inflation still showing a lot of high things on core, uh, really being uh, difficult on a lot of different things. And again, a big, big issue. Uh, and then we're starting to see stuff to kick back up to potentially where Q2 could be really bad. Uh, like something I talked about is that you're going to start getting into seasonal uh, pushes when it comes to inflation and when it comes to gas. Um, so we'll see or when it comes to oil and plus OPEC, you haven't really, you're not going to see a big dramatic effect in OPEC. It's only been about a week since the OPEC thing really kicked off. So now you're going to get a full quarter of it and you really see what kind of impact it has. Uh, so as of right now, tomorrow we got the PPI core first thing in the morning and then we have bank earnings on Friday. Again, um, everything is under the microscope right now. Nothing is looking good, right? And then you got to, not only that, but you got to start looking at forward projections are playing a huge aspect of what's going on here. If they start saying that things are really, really bad, uh, that if, if the word recession is mentioned at all, uh, that could be a huge down, right? The, the market hasn't priced in a recession yet. And if, when it does is when it could potentially fall. And we started getting a lot of those kind of headlines today. And so we started selling off. Uh, again, you're getting these, when you see these these massive, these are like big candles, so not these little short choppy candles that we've been getting. And so when you start seeing big wicks like this, that means there is a lot of sell pressure. All this right here today, um, like I said, all this right here, all this sell pressure, as soon as it hit this box right here, nothing but heavy selling and again it didn't stay for very long in these in these zones uh and then just massive selling so uh, again we will see going forward what's going to happen but uh things are definitely not in a good state of mind uh moving forward and uh, now as far as uh, technical wise again uh we could still drop down the 40 70 uh as that's the weekly uh, bottom range uh so we're kind of watching to see to hit that uh by end of the week question is, is are we going to get enough uh, potential news to break that down and can it continue to start breaking down uh we're definitely going to have to see that um because really we'll be aiming back towards this zone right like i said we've been playing this this big range right now uh back and forth it's about 300 point range here uh, and i could see us heading back down at least at 3800 uh, and then understand that they're still looking at having another increase on the, on May 3rd and then potentially laying off in June. So, again, we've already had bank failures. Um, we're going to see, right? We're going to see how much more uh, we can take. Again, just holding the rates at currently where they are is enough to make things worse, right? 5% um, inflation is still extremely, extremely high. And then you also have, um, and that's just, uh, that's headline, right? You have to understand like the, the food is still extremely high, right? Like bread is still 11% higher. Uh, eggs are still like 36% higher. I mean, they're, they're still like, things are just extraordinarily expensive. And um, and so, uh, and then you have interest rates that are very high. So trying to purchase an automobile or trying to uh, buy a home, right? They're ex extremely expensive or you can't qualify for any of these things. And so, um, you know, people are doing whatever they can just to make, just to get by, just trying to survive. Again, the biggest uh, key aspect to understand here is just trying to survive and get past everything as of right now. So again, we'll see what happens uh, from here. Uh, but again, I'm, my thing has moved on from inflation. Uh, I know inflation is still going to be high for a while. Uh, until unless we get a big event, uh, we get a lot of bank failures, and then we we price in a recession or something along those lines, would cause a big enough um, move down to where uh, we would the banks would be saved, everything else, right? Because then interest rates would have to be cut, uh, right? All these things would have to change, and just with the interest rates being cut would help the banks out tremendously. Uh, would also potentially uh, allow us to uh, start pushing up and not worry about having having things crumble, even if there's still a lot of other potential black swan events. 
uh, at that point. You could say it's already priced in at that point. I don't think we've sold off enough to quote unquote price that in. Uh, I think that's you have to understand we were in a bubble. We're still in a bubble. Then normalization is until you get to around 3,200, and that's the the bare minimum, of them, right? It to get to the to get to there. And uh, I know there was some um, analysis that came out and said I think 3,700 was was one of the floors that they're aiming for. I, I think it's much lower than that. So again, it really depends on the timing of everything. But again, we will see. So. Uh, tomorrow, again, really watching this lower level, like I said, the 4070, again, your top range. We're staying pretty tight in this weekly range. I think we might, we could potentially stay in here till we get bank earnings. Uh, then that would either one explode us up to the 4300 or uh, break us down into aiming for that 3800. Uh, so we'll have to see going from there. Bitcoin still floating and hovering around this 30K mark. Again, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, again, I don't think it's decoupled just yet. I still believe uh, Bitcoin's in a dead cat bounce. Um, but again, we'll see uh, from here. Even this consolidation uh, is big enough to get a nice pop like this. And it could even go up to 40K, right? I even talked about this on um, the monthly, right? Like you can touch up to roughly around, I mean, you could even hit 40K in WIC, right? This is a monthly candle. Uh, you could very not easily hit up to 40 and then whip back down and just start selling again. Uh, just like one of these candles here. That's a monthly candle. A huge move and then whip half of it back uh, very easily. So, again, this massive rip down, dead cat bounce, and then you start selling again. So, again, we'll see what happens. Again, nothing is uh, 100%. You have to realize that. In, uh, this is why I'm event-driven, not only technical-wise, but event-driven because events – do drive and dictate what's really going to happen and can change the dynamic of the market at any moment. So you need to be uh, well aware of that. So with that being said, uh, we'll see what happens with Bitcoin going forward. Uh, gold, we'll take a quick look at gold real quick. Uh, gold continuing to try to break up. Uh, you need gold to break essentially 195 for this thing to start making a new high. Um, again, this is concern. This is recession fears when gold starts pumping. You know, so again, another indicator you have to realize is gold hasn't really pumped, but now there's recession fears. And so now gold is starting to pump again. Uh, that should be concerning uh, nonetheless. But again, we'll see what happens there. And then uh, Tesla, Tesla starting to sell. Got some pretty heavy selling today. So it didn't last. Um, it hit that bottom range. It's still holding this uh, 177. We'll see if this can hold tomorrow. Again, if it could break this, you do have a speed bump here at the 163. But again, I'm trying to fill this gap. I keep pointing this out. I think we'll at least hit 140. Uh, again, by the time we hit 140, what is the rest of the market going to look like? Something you have to understand about Tesla too is Tesla is cutting prices yet again. So more and more indicators of a actual recession. And the more indicators that we're getting of a recession, one day the market's just going to realize, wake up and realize, oh, we're in a recession. We should probably price that in. And that is going to be uh, the thing where we start really tumbling and start essentially going out of control, right? And then eventually get to the point where you start getting panic sellers because it's selling more than people are expecting. And then that adds more to the sell pressure to the downside. So we'll see what happens from here. But again, a very interesting setup that we are in. Uh, BA, uh, again, still holding. Needs to break the 222 or hold the 195. Uh, so again, playing range very much here. And BA is very manipulated uh, with the government and everything else and buyback. So we'll see what happens there. Like I pointed out with Tesla, same thing here with JPM. Uh, this thing needs to break below the 123. And the market's trying to push up somewhat today. But um We'll see what earnings brings. Earnings could bring the one thing that knocks everything down. Now, typically, again, like I said, as far as like earnings, we've had earnings, right? This was the last earnings cycle. We had a huge rip, uh, had earnings, and just kind of chopped all the way till this earnings. Now we're dipping down, which is interesting because you don't typically see sell-offs going into an earnings. Typically, you get a nice push-up, uh, which is, again, could be another sign there that things just aren't looking good and things are all out of whack. So uh, definitely going to have to see what happens moving forward there. And then Goldman Sachs, um, is that Goldman Sachs and uh, Bank of America have sold off enough for me to believe that these can actually be bullish again and start pushing up again? Unless something comes of the black, the banking crisis, uh, 
these things can keep selling. You have to be mindful that it doesn't, that's not going to stop this from still selling. And now it could actually drop down to the 280 and hold and the rest of the market just continue to sell very much a possibility. And so um, when you're looking at positions to enter, typically I would look at something that's been way oversold already. And then if the market does start to sell, I'll watch these key points and see if it does hold those key points uh, and then uh, look for a potential entry there or start DCAing at those points. And then, um, Again, if it continues to drop and you see on every uh, essentially zone, uh, solid support that you see on the way down. Uh, BAC again, it's been wrecked pretty hard. Again, it, it could still go lower. There's a, there's still more meat on the bone. Uh, these things get absolutely wiped out. You have to realize that at one point, Amazon lost uh, tons of tons of money. I think it was back in 2000, and um, where the dot com boom, right, or the bust, and then. Um, it went absolutely down to a couple bucks, right? And you're talking about $100 stocks. We've seen a big dive already, but I think, you know, we're living in a very accelerated environment right now with all the money printing and everything else going on and all the conflict in the world. So there's there's a lot of black swans, again, that could make this thing really, really nasty. And everything that we've gone through has been a very historic time. They'll be writing about this time, you know, down in the future, uh, and what's, what we're living through right now, because we come out of a pandemic and then we had war, uh, then we had high inflation and battling inflation. And then it's, find out down the road that we were in a depression, a global depression at that and uh, bank crisis. And I mean, just read some of the headlines and how could you not expect that we're not in a recession or a depression at this point uh, with all the massive layoffs? Um, you know, the things are, are getting out of control. Right, and you're seeing uh, all kinds of headline news that just are, is not pretty. It's very chaotic, if you will, and that only happens when you know people are on their last leg. And so you need to keep that in mind. So, again, with that being said, uh, there's not much more to really get into. I think at this point we're really aiming. We do have that data tomorrow, but I think ultimately we're we're just waiting for the banks on Friday. Uh, again, that will give us more insight into what could potentially be playing out for next week. Again, we are in full blown earnings mode. We are in earnings mode and selling. On a normal cycle, you normally push up. So that's, again, another sign should be concerning. Normally, April is a very bullish month. So you have a lot of things that are acting very different from the usual. So just keep that in mind. So if you made it this far, uh, I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.